So Notre Dame coach Mike Bray had some interesting comments earlier this week about coaches complaining about changes to college athletics. Here's what he said. He said, we've got to stop complaining. This is the world we're in. And last time I checked, we make pretty good money. So everybody should shut up and adjust. Sounds like decent advice from Mike Bray. It sounds like uh, incredible advice. I'm going to expand on this because this was uh, that. Yeah. So there were the ACC meetings were earlier this week. They wrapped up today. Um, and, you know, a few writers went down to Amelia Island on Florida. You ever been to Amelia Island? Um, I believe so. Yes. I've, yeah. I've, been, I've been to a lot of these. I used to go to the spring meetings all the time. And it was like an amazing. It's a hell of a work assignment. No, a, no unquestionably a great work assignment. Yeah, yeah, like when I was a beat writer, I would go every year, and it was like you know to the for Conference USA or the American whatever league they were in at the time. I guess it was Conference USA. It was um, uh, like the Destin area, San Destin area, and you really just go down there and you sit outside of a uh, you know hotel meeting rooms and you wait for people to wait walk out, and they tell you some stuff, and then uh, you you knock out your work and and look at the ocean. Yeah. It's a really, it's a really good assignment. Uh, I, I went to Big East uh, a couple of times, I think, maybe once, once or twice, and uh, it felt like that was near Sawgrass, maybe. But like all of that, all the spring meetings are in great places. I've been to uh, Atlantic Ten before. I enjoy them. I'd like to go back. Yeah, I've never done that assignment, but I'd be, I certainly be open to it. And these meetings with these conferences are going to be happening all across the month. So you're going to, we're going to talk about what Bray said here, but you'll see the occasional headline trickle out over the next couple of weeks from, you know, the SEC is at the end of the month. So you'll get a commissioner, you'll get an AD, you'll get a coach. So there'll be more of this stuff coming as people trying to figure out NIL and whatnot. Andrew Carter, who does good work out of North Carolina, here is the full Bray quote. Um, he said, I told a lot of young coaches when we were on the road in April, I said, we got to stop complaining. Like, this is the world we're in. Last time I checked, you make pretty good money, so everyone should shut up and adjust. You know, that's just the world we're in now, and, you know, I'm not in it as long as the Josh Pastners and some of these young guys. Uh, a side note, someone look up Josh Pastner's age. My guess is going to be 47. So good luck to you all. I'll be back in five years and see what's up. Just remember, man, we've had it pretty good here, and it's a great job. It's high risk, high reward, but we all know what we signed up for. I don't have an applause button loaded on my soundboard here. Uh, if I did, I would have it rolling and roaring right now because we're not going to relitigate all the NIL issues again on this pod. We got to talk about it plenty. We've talked about it. We won't get too deep into this, uh, but had to, had to <laughs> give it up for Mike Bray. I heard from a few coaches after this, cause this went like, I don't know, semi-viral. Um, first of all, a lot of coaches have loved bitching about all this. For, and if any coach was going to do this on the record and say this, of course it was going to be Mike Bray because Mike Bray has no insecurity. That has been evidenced in the way that he's run his program. It's been evidenced in a continually used photo of him without his shirt on after winning the Maui tournament circa 2017, I think that was, celebrating with his team in the locker room. <laughs> Harry chested with the lay on. I don't care. I'm Mike Bray. And he's always willing to give you things and say things on the record that many other coaches just aren't willing to go there. That's not to say that the issues that are out there, the complications, I had a conversation with the power conference coach an hour and a half ago about this very thing. And he was laying out why so many things with this collectives and the NIL, a lot of the coaches just don't know what the hell to do and why they're lost. And he wasn't complaining as much as he was just kind of laying it out. But Mike Bray saying, we're millionaires. We got a pretty great job. Yeah, we got to work a little bit harder. You guys don't realize how bad you make us sound on the whole when you either bemoan this on the record, if you say it, you know, on background without attribution. And what do you know? As he very often is, Mike Bray, dead on and right, commend him for this. I think even more college football coaches should take his advice basketball as well but the, when you get into the football space last thing on this gp because i gotta say that i mean shouts to Stuart mandel he brought this to my attention here's a quote from today a booster isn't going to start isn't going to offer a student athlete a big sum of money if they know if they come to the university and they have to sit out for a year we need to do something to prevent an athlete from making as much money this is Stuart mandel uh passing along Iowa AD Gary Barta's idea that we should go back to having players sit out a year if they want to transfer, which is never going to happen. You want to know why there are so many issues in college athletics and why this thing is going to take longer than it needs to to really get resolved? 
it's because you have so many people that have been functioning in the NCAA space literally for decades and the way they did it, the way they learned, the way they learned from their bosses when they got this job, the infrastructure of the actual business has been repressing the rights to a certain degree. I'm not saying across the board, but you get what I'm getting at here, GP. Student athletes did not have as much empowerment as many people believed and more and more and more have believed that they should. And so that these people that are well-meaning people in many instances, and they're very intelligent people in many instances, they say these things and it's like, what are you talking about, man? I cannot believe what Gary Barta said today. And it's what Mike Bray was getting at. Shut up. Stop complaining. Learn to adjust. Things are going to change. No one wants to hear multimillionaires bitch about what they can't do in an era of much overneeded change. Yeah, I don't. Um, why do athletic directors or anybody else care how much money boosters are giving players? Like, why do you care? Like, I have never heard an athletic director say, if you made coaches sit out a year when they change jobs, boosters wouldn't give them so much money because that is who pays these coaches salaries. It's boosters. The same people who are putting these collectives together are the same people who pay coaches salaries. If you're not, if you don't care how much money Nick Saban or John Calipari or um, anybody else makes, why do you care how much basketball players or football players makes? Like, why is that a point of concern for you? Why, why are you so offended by student athletes being allowed to accept what somebody determines their value is worth? I, I just don't understand it other than these are people who have been functioning, like you said, a certain way for so long that they are really struggling with the concept of things now being fair because they were so unfair for so long. It's weird. Things are finally fair. And yet there are certain people who work in college athletics who can't recognize that it's fair because they thought the unfair way was always the fair way. They don't understand that we went from unfair to fair. They think we went from fair to unfair. They've got it like completely backwards. And Gary Barda's quotes were, um, uh, were a good example of that. Um, back to Mike Brain's comments. Like, let me start by saying Mike's right. And I'm glad he said it. I even texted him and like, I was laughing at his other quotes. He had a quote about one of his assistants. He said, I've got an oh. assistant. It was great. He said, I've got an assistant who was talking to the other day and he came in and he said, coach, I wake up every morning, I read the Bible and then I get it, dive right into the portal. He said, you got to switch that up, buddy. <laughs> you got to switch the order. <laughs> like that's, you can get, that's, that's more serious than it is kidding, by the way. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Like, Hey, you can, get the, line. Yeah. you can get the God at noon, but like when we wake yeah. up, let's check the portal and then we'll see what God's up to after we get out of the portal. Um, so I texted him and, and uh, you know, he, everybody likes Mike Prey and I, th those quotes are, are among the reasons why he's right. What I will say is that, um, the thing he's most right about is it just doesn't come across the right way when you've got millionaire basketball coaches bitching about our job. Like, uh, you know, uh, do we have complicated, chaotic, demanding, stressful jobs? Yes, but we get paid a lot of money. There are other people who have complicated, chaotic, stressful jobs and are making $30,000, $40,000, even less than that in some ways. So it just doesn't play properly so shut up just adjust and shut up and be appreciative you're making 2.8 million dollars per year guaranteed five-year contract um what what i do think is true is that it's it's very normal human nature to be frustrated just when you're frustrated mm -hmm. like i i've never un, like you hear sometimes like you'll complain about something and relatively speaking it's minor and somebody will point out it could be your wife husband a friend a boss um they'll say hey you know it could be worse well, yeah, of course it could be worse. I, you know, like, I, you know, all, all of my kids could be diagnosed with cancer. Of course it could be. It could always be worse. I got it. But that doesn't mean uh, it, it's it, it's unreasonable to ever be frustrated by things. Like, I get frustrated every day in my house about something. Either somebody didn't throw, throw away a Capri Sun package, you know? Um, somebody, somebody didn't That's close. That's frustrating you? Badly. Lose like, Capri Sun on the counter? Dude, I mean. It? No, it's not a loose Capri Sun. They drink the Capri Sun, 
And then they just throw the Capri Sun package in the floor. And then, if, you know, an hour later, they'll That's go bad get bad coaching. I don't know what you want me to say. That's bad coaching. They're not They're, respecting you. You got an issue in your locker room right now. I've got locker room issues. There's no getting around it. Like last night. You got a it, locker room issue, and they refuse to transfer. That's it, the problem. It, it, oh, I wish my kids were getting the transfer portal. <laughs> I wish they would transfer. I've had enough. I, I, I've had enough. If my kids want to get in the transfer portal, let's send them to Notre Dame. Let Mike Bray take, take control. I've had enough. I want a new team. <laughs> no, it's like I, it, it came to a head last night. I said, I said, I swear to God, if I find another Capri Sun package laying around, I'm never buying Capri Suns again. And they both looked at me at the same time, my little guys, like they had it planned. I know they didn't, but it's like they had it planned. And they both looked at me at the exact same time. And they said, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, okay, don't buy them then. Like, they don't believe me. They, my threats are empty. They don't believe me. My threats are in. Because at the end of the day, they got to have something to drink. You think I want to go downstairs and make something for them every time? Nope. Just get a Capri Sun package. Problem is, I got to walk around the house picking them up all the time. So, you know, could it be worse? Of course it could be worse. But I still get frustrated. Like, I've got an amazing job. You know what my job is, basically? I get paid to talk. How incredible is that? Right? Now, does that mean I never get frustrated at work? You and I talk. I, of course, you know I get – you get frustrated. I get frustrated. We all get frustrated. And I think the seismic changes to college athletics has been frustrating for the majority of college coaches. They're dealing with things they never imagined having to deal with. They're dealing with things they, um, di you know, um, are, are, they don't know how to deal with. Um, they're losing players in ways they never lost players before. They're having to compete for players in ways that they never competed for players before. So I think they're frustrating. They're frustrated. And I understand why. Like, I get it. But Mike's central point was it just makes us look bad when we're multimillionaire coaches complaining all the time, given what other people are dealing with. Like, there's not a Division One coach in America who – pays attention to gas prices because it doesn't really matter to them. There's not a division one coach in America who's been impacted by inflation because it doesn't really impact them that much. But there are millions of Americans who are like struggle in real ways with chaotic and, and stressful and demanding jobs. And uh, like Mike said, uh, you know, we don't need to be the ones complaining. There's a lot of people in this country who need to complain about their circumstances. We're probably uh, not in that group. So if you're frustrated, understandable, but just zip it and focus and adjust and adapt. And, you know, your direct deposits will still be there every two weeks. Take a look at them if you start feeling sorry for yourself.